What happened last night? Uh, it was not last night. It was like a few days ago. My boyfriend like got in the prison. So and another guy like, I we were staying on the beach. So and everybody like saw us that he got in the jail and everybody knew that I'm by myself. And another guy came like in my fucking tent and fucking raped me. And after like just the guys from the beach beat him like so badly, he almost died. And that's why police came and took like my tent and everything like. All my clothes, everything is gone. You've been here from the Ukraine for how long? For how long have you been here? Like eight years. Eight years. It's gonna be like yeah, in October, eight years. You've been staying where? I was like, I came like to New York. I came with like my, with my husband. So and after like just we broke up. I started to work in like as a stripper, like in a club. Mm starting to do like a lot of drugs. Lost my apartment. After I moved to Miami, I was like just living in Miami for two years after back in New York and it was like just more or less okay. So I have like a few businesses. Uh, after coronavirus start and some guy pushed me under the train, you see I have like a metal leg. Oh wow. Yeah, I'm just like accidentally alive. After that, I start like to be like all the time on the Xanax because like I have like the fucking horrible panic attacks. The United States has been rough to you. Mm? The, United, you. the United States has been rough for you. Yeah, a lot, like really rough. How long? You so you came from Miami to Los Angeles? I mean, no, I came like from Miami. I just like was living, staying in Miami, and I back like to New York. And after New York, I came here. You've been in LA how long? In Los Angeles, I came in May. Like just all summer, like three or four months. What is your drug now? Hmm? What is your drug now? I'm just like, I, like I'm doing crack. So that's not my favorite. What's your favorite? Acid. Mm. And I love cocaine, but right now it's like so difficult to find like any cocaine, you know, like just everything mixed with fentanyl. Yeah. Yeah. So like just, I don't really like masses make me like crazy, like ruin my brain but like like the the best that you can find is fucking crap <laughs> so yeah how but do you support yourself how do you make money i'm doing painting but you painting what well i'm just painting i'm artist i'm selling my art oh you are yeah like just like that's why i say like just when the police came and like grabbed my tent like it was like so many painting i was selling it on a beach so, right now I don't have like any supplies, nothing. I have to like do something with this. And my boyfriend is like in prison. I'm just by myself. So they put him in jail? Mm hmm. I mean, like, he was like in a prison for four years. So he was like stealing car and like guns. He stole like 15 fucking guns. Oh, wow. And his friend like just called the police, you know, like the police came like and like arrested him. So he spent like four years in a jail, in a prison, I mean. Yeah. And he was like on parole. I don't know if they gonna if they can like just you know like back him in prison. Nobody know like he's like court like on twenty first. How does this lifestyle get to you emotionally? What do you mean? Does it affect you emotionally to be living on the streets like this? Of course. I mean, I always have. You see, like just I just like got in the street just because of this guy because of my boyfriend. I always have like the sugar daddy. You know, I didn't. I mean. I had like two apartments in New York. I still have one like in Brooklyn. But I mean, it's love and he's crazy. Uh, he lost his wallet with all documents. Somebody robbed me, you know, like just like my documents is gone. I was waiting like for like almost two months to, like to restore my like New York uh, license. So yeah. And we was like fighting all the time, like doing like a lot of drugs. So it's like everything is affected. Mm. Do you regret coming to the United States? Mm? Do, you, do you regret coming to the US from Ukraine? Not at all. It's much better here. Yeah. Really? I mean, yeah. Tell me about living in the, you're growing up. You grew, you grew up there? I grew up like just by the way in Belarus. Mm -hmm. I was born over there after my family moved like to Ukraine. So, and like, um, 
it's horrible like political situation you know like it's corruption everywhere so like just and i have like not a really like happy family you know my mom just like my like real father he left my mom when she was pregnant so i was like growing up with stepfather who was like raping me up like all my childhood that's why i was like run away from the house you know like just when i was 14. oh you were, you were being molested by mm. your stepdad mm -hmm. oh, wow. so yeah and my mom like you know like she just closed eyes for this so so your childhood was very rough yeah it was really rough i was like just by myself you know like just because like it was like in Soviet Union, I was born like over there and like when the woman pregnant and she just like by herself, you know, like just it's not easy. Everybody like just if she was like just fired from her job, you know, because like her behavior was not really moral, you know, like all her fam like my family start to hate her like uh, and me too, you know. So and she just like all the time blamed me that I just like ruined her life. But like you see. So do you have, do you feel like you have any family now? I don't have family at all. You have no one. Um, I just like my sister not really like communicate with me. So my mom, I don't. I mean, she's calling me, asking me about like how am I, you know. Like, but my family has money, you know, but they they never like help me with it. I'm just by myself. What is your biggest problem now? Is it the drug addiction? I'm, I can, I'm just like alcoholic, to be honest. I'm not like drug addicted. I couldn't be without the drugs, you know. I'm doing it like, it's like, it's like time, like just going much faster, you know. So alcohol is really? Alcohol is my problem. But it, I mean, I have like PSTD after like I got like under the train, you know, I had like just a panic disorder, you know, like just. What, what happened on the train? Like the guy pushed me under the train. In New York? In New York, in subway. Yeah, that's why I moved from New York because I, I couldn't use like the subway, you know, anymore. Like it scared me. Like just even like when I just like hear like the voice noise of train, you know, because I was almost dead. I just was like, I'm just honestly, I'm just super lucky that I'm just alive. And like just the doctor, when I got like this, like you see, it's like completely mashed. That's it's all metal. Really? Yeah, it's like the you see, like this is a metal leg. You walk fine. I mean, like the doctors, nobody like even couldn't say me if I can walk or not. I was like spent like six months like in hospital, and just cause like one junkie guy decided like to push me under the train. I even didn't know this dude, you know. He just I, just random. I just like I yeah. I was supposed to go like to vacation like in Atlanta, to visit my friends. So and like I was staying waiting like subway in headphones, you know, and he just like. He was on drugs, I think, or whatever, you know, and he just like pushed me and like I felt like on the running train, you know, like and I was like almost melted. I was like falling down with the train, you know, and I just already see like how my head, you know, melted between train and like the platform. And I was think I was almost like ready to die. And after I didn't realize like just goddamn, I never gonna see Las Vegas again. <laughs> That's my favorite city. And I pushed my leg, you know, between like the train and platform and it saved my life. It's ruined my leg, but it saved my life. Wow. So, and I was lucky, I got like just uh, to the hospital and it was like the shift of really like famous like professor, you know, like just he's like orthopedic genius you know and even he didn't know like if i can walk or not like my first surgery was like 10 hours your leg looks perfect hmm? your leg looks almost perfect yeah i mean like but you know like and you walk perfectly yeah but i just like it was crazy nobody believed that i can walk again but going through something like that would make you drink hmm? going through something like that would make one drink yeah I mean, I started drinking like uh, because of my ex-boyfriend. He pushed me like in a strip club, you know. And when I was like working in a strip club, it's like drugs everywhere, you know, like just. And when you're on the drugs, you're just like drinking, like it's like to calm down, like after this. So and it was like this, like just you doing like just cocaine after you just like drinking after you doing Xanax to fall asleep. And like this became a routine and I was like this like four years, you know, and it was like a big money, but like you anyway spending it like for nothing. How bad is your drinking? Hmm? How bad does your drinking get? 
when I'm not like, um, you know, when I'm not emotional, I mean, how to say, like, when I'm not stressed out, I just not drink a lot. I can, like, drink, like, just probably a bottle of wine in a day, you know, like, but when I'm stressed out, I can drink nine bottles of wine. In one day? In one day. I'm drinking nonstop. And it's like, even don't make me like, just, you know, like drunk. I just keep me like, just normal. So. How old are you? Old? How old am I? 33? Jesus Christ is. <laughs> no children? No, I wish, but I can't. You can't? I can't have a children. I have like, just problems. But I love children. My sister has a nephew, you know, like just, I never see him like alive, just like, just on the Skype. So, yeah. What would you like to do with your life? I mean, listen, when I was like in New York, like, first of all, I need like just to calm down because like I couldn't like concentrate on nothing when I'm just like stressed out, you know. I need like just apartment. So, I'm like, I, I want to do some business. I had like two businesses in New York. Just my first business, it was like just um, a bakery. Uh, me and like four of my friends, we was like just create like the bakery. Like me and my first, like second husband, I moved here, you know, we was like cake artist. So I was doing like custom made cakes. And the second business, it was digital marketing agency because I'm just like doing web, web design, you know, like social media stuff. And um, yeah, and also I'm doing painting. It's like before the coronavirus, it was like so cool. I was doing like the art party, you know, like I had like a lot of collectors. I mean, I still have, but I'm just like procrastinate too much, like just during like all this uh, pandemic, you know, and I didn't do really nothing. So I just, I want to back, be back in art. Your friends? Hmm? You have friends? Me? Not really. <laughs> just the last, <laughs> I just had a friend, you know, like just, it doesn't happen. Like my boyfriend got in the prison. I had like just a friend, but I fucked with her boyfriend. So right now we're not friends anymore. Yeah, that'll hurt a friendship. Mm. I'm bad in a friend. <laughs> Who is the friend? I don't know how to like just how to be a friend. You blame the crack? No, I blame my side. <laughs> that's, that's me. This is you? Yeah. Well. Would you describe yourself as self-destructive? I think so, yeah. I mean, you know what, like, that's funny. Yeah, like, I distract myself a lot. But in the, it's like just the waves, you know, because I'm bipolar, you know, like, just I can be like just okay and like uh, successful and everything like for some time and after I just like push myself down you know so so badly and like yeah I it's like I don't know it's like hard to explain you, you self-sabotage yeah you feel like you don't deserve to be successful or happy sometimes yes because I did a lot of shit in my life. But like, that's what I say, like, it's like just a different state of mind. Like, you know, like just when I up, like, for example, I just like, I decide, I'm just like thinking they deserve everything, you know, like the best that can happen. But when I just like down, I'm just hate myself, you know, and I just like, I feel myself like piece of shit. Like something like this. If you had your life to live all over again, what would you have done differently? Hmm? If you had your life to live all over again, what would you have done differently? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. I mean, I love myself. I mean, I distract myself, but in the same time, I know, like, everything that I did, you know, like, make me the person who I am right now. Like, just everything that happened. Like, even like just when I got like under the train, you know, it's like changed me. Like it's like it showed me like completely different, different like 
world, you know, like you, when you see like death in the face, it's like, I mean, you never became like just the person who you was before. Did you have role models when you huh? were a kid? Did you have role models in your life when you were a kid? I don't know, the only that I was, I remember that I, I was like just, hate to be like the similar that my parents, you know, like just, I never like want to be like them, that's it. I like hate everything that was like just connected with it, you know, like, I just like try to change my hair color, like, cause we, me and my mom, you know, we have like just real, really, really similar like features, you know, like almost the same face. And I hate it like all my life, you know, I just was changing like just since I started like to be like just 12 or something, you know, just like I put a lot of piercing in myself, you know, just change like the hair, you know, like to be like completely different. It was not like just uh, any model, you know, like the, or someone like who, who I want to be like, but I just the only that I know that I don't want to be like these people that's, you know. What are you afraid of? Hi, and spiders, uh, and pain. And trains. And trains. I mean, like, by the way, when I got under the trains, I didn't feel any pain. That's the adrenaline, though. Um? That's the adrenaline. Yeah, my leg was completely, you know, meshed. I just, like, remember how I was laid down, and, like, just all of these cars, it's like open fractures, you know, like, my jeans was raped, like, and bones was, like, just, around but I was feel myself like that I'm like on cocaine you know just like I was so up I didn't lose the consciousness nothing you know and just the paramedic was like just tried to get me you know like and I was like just talking with him with them like smiling like crazy I I came to the hospital I fill out all the forms you know by myself like always like just a smash legs I didn't feel nothing until like just after the surgery, I just like got in consciousness and that was fucking freaky pain. I was like, just they give me like they loaded morphine, oxycodone, all three of them together, you know. And it was like six months like this. And after it, like the leg was swollen like for like just probably eight months, I couldn't like walk normally. I supposed to like use the crunches, but I came like out of the hospital and asked my roommate, like I said, like just fuck the crunches, like go and buy me like sneakers, you know. He bought me the like, sneakers and I just like buy the flight to Las Vegas <laughs> like in a few days and like just, it was like stop in, uh, in Ohio, I think, you know, and I realized stop for two hours and I realized that my leg is completely swollen and I just what the fuck I'm doing, like I don't supposed to go there. And after that, like I got like in the jail there with my broken leg. So, yeah, it was crazy. What's your favorite quality about yourself? Quality? Mm, my favorite. I'm smart. And the same like, time, I'm super stupid. <laughs> yeah. But I like to analyze everything, you know, what's going on around me. I have like a critical thinking, I think. I have like my master's degree in fine art, so. And Sasha, what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in your life? Most important in my life? Yeah, what's the most my important thing you've learned in life? I don't know, honestly, like just probably like just to see the beauty, you know? Like beauty is important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, Sasha, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you. I wish you lots of luck. Thank you. You're on the streets. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully I get out from the streets. Me too, thank you.